They purposely do not want that. Again, what type of country are we talking about? We're talking about a country that, that, <laughs> let me be careful. <laughs> well, you go missing. <laughs> let me be careful. We're talking about a country that makes money off of selling placebos and not the cure, knowing they have the cure. Sweeps. Not a man here who could censor me. I'm on the pier, Elohim with the energy. Uh, black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just want to build with you. Black yeah, so I, I want to respond to, to your last point. I think, um, I think we're going in the same direction. I think, that, I think the disconnect, though, is I think we both recognize that black liberation has to be more strategic in context with history. Because one of the things that I used to say very staunchly, and, mm-hmm. and a lot of Africans say it, is that if we, if we, if we, if we, then, right. then, then, then. And I think it wasn't until I really went down the rabbit hole of history from mm-hmm. Marcus Garvey, to Elijah Muhammad, to, to uh, uh, Doug, Frederick Douglass, the whole nine, um, and learned about what happened when black people had audacity yes. in this context. Yes. Right? And we can't divorce ourselves of, because we, we, we have to be evidence-based. You know, as a man, right. I have to be evidence-based. If you do A, B will happen, right? And a lot of the times when we're having this conversation, we're talking about certain things in a vacuum of, even though... They burnt down the last five Wall Streets. Let's build another one and just hope for the best. Right. Without any, without a moat, right? One of the things we talk about in finance is, is a moat, right? And I think part of why that moat is necessary is when you understand that what happened, and, and this is why I agree with you, it's not about skin color. It's about economics. Correct. And that economics is intimately linked with skin color. Like, we can't divorce the two. And the only reason I say that is because does Billy Bob down the street care that, you know, this black boy goes to prison? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I don't care about what Billy Bob thinks. Does Billy Bob want his, um, his cell phone to be twice as expensive? No. Now, in a global context, if Billy Bob had to give a fuck about the kids in the Congo and understood that companies like Apple, Microsoft are exploiting those kids and their labor and their land so that an iPhone could be a thousand dollars, you know what I mean? He might feel bad, but he's still not going to want a more expensive iPhone. So when we look at it in, in, in a Western context of black suffering, I think, and this is where I'm with you a thousand percent, I think we spend entirely too much time talking about Billy Bob doesn't like black people. Correct. Or Mary Jane doesn't like black people. Correct. She doesn't want to marry black people. I think that's not the conversation. Correct. The real conversation is this country was founded on a concept that certain men are better than other men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of the cognitive dissonance is to give yourself moral permission to exploit the other person's labor Mm -hmm. for your benefit. Correct. Now, what happened is that idea did not go away. And I think we agree on that. Yes. What it did was it morphed itself into a lot more covert. Very covert. Exactly. And and what it really hit me in the face is I used to work in real estate finance before I transitioned to tech. One of the things we learned about is redlining. Mm-hmm. And how, you know, strategically they drew lines so white people would stay here and black people would stay here and drive up the property value here, drive down the property value there. It's 2022. It's still a thing. We don't talk about it as much. Right. But it is absolutely still a thing. And it's not until you get into the back books and you start looking and you're like, what's the difference? Oh, shit. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. It is very covert. I'm going to tell you how covert it is, even from a, from a, um, from a law enforcement perspective. I'm going to give you how covert it is. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but, um, you know, I'm here, I'm here now. So it is what it is. Tell the truth, brother. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> there's a correlation between these companies that own weapons 
Investors who invest in prisons. Investors who invest in record labels, right? You'll be surprised the correlation of those who invest in rap music. Those who have, are, are also um, married and have other corporate interests with prison systems, right? Um, <clears throat> I learned a long time ago about a company, right? I'm not gonna say the names, but it's a tire company. You go there and get your tires changed. And the guy was telling me, um, he was like, oh, you know, we're gonna replace all four tires. I said, cool. So I look on the receipt and it's like, I'm paying them to dispose my tire, right? It's like $20 a time. I'm like, yo, why am I? I said, matter of fact, I'll keep my tire. Why are y'all charging me extra $20? You know, I'm young, I'm young. And he said, well, you know, I'm gonna give you a little secret. He said, this company has a, another sister company that they own. They actually have a, uh, a company that makes shingles. So they buy, you know, you, we, we take your tire, we charge you for taking it. And we say we're disposing it. But what we're doing is we're actually breaking it down and we make shingles out of it. Then we own another company that makes turf. And so we take the rubber and we make turf out of your tires. So what do I see as a young man? I, I'm seeing a company that has other companies that are connected to other companies. And they're taking the raw materials from me, right? And I'm paying them to take it. They're making 100% they're making profit. They're getting the raw materials from me out of my expense. And they're using it to fund other organizations that nobody knows about, right? They have this front organization here, but behind the scenes, they got all this other stuff going on. You guys, and this is, it's not about black and white, it's about business. And racism with, is about business. racism is about business. You know, you you I've I've come across some people who um, in this profession and who have been uh, honest enough with me to just kind of give me the real. And it's like, man, nobody cares that you're black. You know, they said, you know how much a black body is worth, mm. right? Do you know how much a black body is worth on the market? You know. A lot of people don't even know that melanin is actually profitable. People don't know that your organs are profitable, right? They don't care. You know, if you work for a company and the company is telling you to say, hey, encourage them to kill one another. Because by doing that, we kill two birds with one stone, right? I have one body I can make five, half a million dollars off of. I got another body we can put them in the extended stay prison. I make money off of them too. Hell, hold on, but not only that, the weapon that they use, because my homeboy owns that company too, I can make money on the back end. And then the main guy is like, okay, I own the record label that's allowing them to push the music that encourages them, influences them to make this thing going. Who, right? is, who is them though? <laughs> <laughs> who is it's them? the elites, right? No, 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 who is the them that they're influencing? Oh, black people. It's a black people. race. It's, <clears throat> it's about race to who? To the elites. No, it's about race to us. To them, color doesn't matter. The only color that matters is green. But what, what I'm saying is, I don't think they make the distinction, is my point. I think, I think um, to them, we, are, we were brought over here. African Americans were brought over here as mules. Yes. So to them, we are mules. So I'm with you on if we have the color conversation. You said it's we covert. Exactly. We, yeah. we don't get anywhere with the color conversation. However, I don't think you can divorce the color aspect. So it, it's green and black. I mean, that's, <laughs> black I mean, is green. Yeah, black is black is green. Black is green. I think that's the best. The thing is this: they made us. The problem is there's 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 a there's a psychological war, and then there's the real war. We are not. We are. We we don't understand what's going on behind the scene, right? We are focused on the surface level of the of the issue. The I agree surface. A thousand percent, yeah. So what's marketed to us is racism, right? We can't see again where the real money is going. What's really going on behind the scenes? We don't even understand how business really works, right? I talk to people. Go talk to people who work a morgue, people who work the morgues in some of these big cities like Chicago, you know, and they talk about all the bodies that come through there. Talk to them and, and ask them how much those. The problem is he was like, oh, well, 
I don't want to give our organs away to my loved one. I don't want my loved one to, we don't want to, we don't want to volunteer their organs away. We don't want to do any of that. Okay, man. Sure. Right. Okay. You know how much a kidney's worth? You know how much a liver is worth? Lungs? You know, eyes? Do you know how much those things are worth on the black market? You mean to tell me? Black bodies are very profitable. The dysfunction of the black community is very profitable. Like you said, they found ways. Here's, the, here's what I've, I've learned and realized. People who want to make money, they find different ways to do it. Facts. You talked about the Nike sweatshops and the cell phones being made. Cool. They find other ways to do it. Blood diamonds, they find another way to do it, right? What was the main thing in this, in this country? They started off with um, um, Jim Crow. They started off with the black codes. They put all these things in place so they can lock people up. They're like, all right, well, if we can't, if we can't just have slaves, let's find an alternative way to get them in the prison so that we can use their labor for free. They're always thinking, right? These are, these are the, the big elites, the people who make all the money. They're not your everyday white. The everyday white person moving up and down this country is not our problem. I agree with you a thousand percent. Yeah. You know, and we're and but they taught us to dislike them. They taught us to dislike one another, right? I have white friends. They don't. They don't act nothing like what the media says or what we think, right? Because we're so disconnected. They want us to feel that way. It's the the people. The elites are the ones calling all the shots. These are the ones that we'll never see, right? I, I want to add to that just real quick. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a there's a guy. Are you familiar with Tim Wise? Yes. The white dude. He's, he's a brilliant dude. But he uh, he was talking about how he's talking about exactly what you're saying. He mm -hmm. was saying that part of what happened and part of the history that we don't really address is that white people didn't own slaves. Mm -hmm. Certain white people own slaves. Correct. The elite white people own slaves. Correct. And this is what happened. They owned slaves, but they also had indentured servants. Yes. And they looked out on the plantation. They said, oh, damn, these slaves and these indentured servants, they Which getting are the along whites? pretty well. Exactly. The poor whites were coming together. They're getting along pretty well. And they are outnumbering us. So how there can we go. sow discourse in the community they've created? Exactly. We're going to make these poor whites identify with us. Yes. Because they look like us. Correct. Now, we fast forward 2022. Even though my white colleague isn't my enemy, we cannot forget that piece of the conversation. Absolutely. So how, 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 how do we, in understanding that he's not necessarily the enemy, mm -hmm. but he's an instrument of the enemy? Of course. We are also an instrument of the facts, enemy. Facts. So the thing is, again, they're using, they're playing two sides against one another on a, on a chessboard, right? Again, we are, we are upset at the puppet and not the puppeteer. This is the problem, right? So the issue is not, again, the people that we can come in contact with day in, day in, out. That's not the issue. The issue are the ones that are actually controlling all the pieces on the chessboard. The problem is the propaganda is so strong, right? We now have to try to wake our people up, right? But we can't educate our own people properly. So when we try to wake each other up, the more we rock each other, we end up rocking the more to sleep, right? So what is the issue? We have no control. We own nothing. And because we own nothing, we can't get a footstool to try to rebuild and recreate. Let, let, let me ask you this, because you just made a, a point that I think is really interesting. Although poor white dude is not the issue. Right. His grandfather mm -hmm. was part of the KKK, mm -hmm. was part of the mob that lynched Emmett Till, was part of the mob that burnt down Black Wall Street. Right. So his grandfather was an instrument. Yes, he was. Of the enemy. Yes, he was. And his grandfather also, in some ways, passed on some of that disposition mm -hmm. to him. How do we have those two conversations? So the issue is this. Um, this country is a beautiful country. It's a great country. Um, it's being manipulated by powers, right? It's being manipulated. We are all being manipulated. It is what it is. That's, that's the reality. If this country wanted us to be greater than we are now, this country has the potential to be greater than all the nations in this, in this, in this world, right? They purposely do not want that. Again, what type of country are we talking about? We're talking about a country that... that <laughs> Let me be careful. <laughs> well, you go missing. <laughs> Let me be careful. We're talking about a country that makes money off of 
selling placebos and not the cure, knowing they have the cure. Think of where we are, you guys, right? So, so listen, I don't want to dive too, I don't want to get too crazy with it, but you know, we, me and you, we, we just want you to now. come home. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is the, this is, this is why, this is why our people have to wake up. And I, I know people get upset when I say white supremacy, this, that. White supremacy, again, is a tool used, right, for division. Right. Again, you understand the history of how white, poor whites, and slaves and poor blacks were used against one another. If, but everybody doesn't know that. So if you know that, then your, your idea is like, hold on, hold on, you guys. Hey, they're playing us. They're playing us, KKK member. I know you think you hate me for whatever reason, right? But I'm telling you, they're playing us. This is exactly what we, they want. This is what they want us to do, to hate one another so they can take advantage. Again, what makes sense doesn't make dollars. And that's the problem. So here we go. We fast forward now. People who have been used and played and manipulated. You have to ask, again, you have to ask, when black people have started to create organizations of empowerment, they would send other black people in to destroy it, right? <laughs> it took Martin Luther King 365 days for the bus boycott, right? You guys, it's all about money, you know, but again, how do you... How do you combat it? We have to segregate, respectfully segregate ourselves from the things that we love the most. We have to segregate ourselves from the things that we feel like we need to have. You know, there's no, there's nowhere in this, in this fight, or there's, it's a zero sum game. That's the best way to explain it, right? And if you want something, you're taking it from someone else. This is the whole idea and the concept of power. We just can't sit here and talk about what we need to have, and what we should have, and it's just going to manifest itself. You have to fight for it respectfully, right? It's not violence. I'm never, I'm never saying anything about violence, but you have to fight in some form or fashion. You have to give up something in order to gain so much more. We get exploited. White people are not the biggest problem. We get exploited by other ethnic groups in our own community. Facts. That's a big fact. So, so again, we're, we're sitting here complaining about the puppet, but the puppeteer no one is following the strings. So let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, because I'm with you a thousand percent. History doesn't really talk about this often, but one of the most dangerous Black Panthers from a United States perspective, United mm -hmm. States government perspective, was Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. Why was he so dangerous? He was dangerous because he did exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. He not only galvanized the black folk, but he galvanized the white folk who don't even like black folk. Correct. And they had to take him out. Of course. So how, I guess my question is, from a strategic perspective, we can tell people what needs to happen. Right. right? But understanding the context and understanding the booby traps <laughs> <laughs> that have been set, how do we have the conversation in a more covert, strategic way. You can't because, again, we have a group of people who still believe white supremacy is the reason why we're not successful. If you believe that white supremacy is the reason why we, are, we don't have what we have or we can't gain what we need to gain, then, then that's, that's the biggest obstacle is breaking the illusion. You guys, I, I get it that, again, they have leverage. Right, they're sixty percent. We're only thirteen. I get it. I'm not saying that it's not. We're a not. We're not talking about the sixty. We're talking about the elites. We're talking about not not white supremacy from it because I agree that yeah. the white supremacy conversation of Billy Bob down the street doesn't like black people. Right. I'm talking about every yes, the, the single sabotage. institution yes. in this country was created with the idea that black people weren't people Correct. to exploit them economically. You have to. You gotta. You have to be willing to, you have to be willing to let go. What is the, what is the, what is it, what is it? You have to be willing to, here's the thing. The black community is addicted to the idea of white supremacy. There's an addiction there. There's an addiction. We, we, we want it to exist so bad to validate our current situation, right? We need it to be real. We need to believe in it. 
in order to make everything make sense. But if you take it away, right, if you actually take it away, then in the moment, there's a realization that this is on us. It's always been on us, right? So how does it work? There has to be a, there has to be, <laughs> unfortunately, there has to be something so tragic, something so dynamic that takes place within the black community for us to all collectively wake up and say, all right, you guys, this but is I, it. But this I, is I, I don't think, I don't think that would work because of white supremacy. Because I, I think the only difference between our stances is, I think you're, 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 I think there are two white supremacies. Okay, right here. I think the first white supremacy is the literal translation, white people are supreme. Yes. I think that's a useless conversation. I agree with you right. 100%. But the other white supremacy is an apparatus. It's an instrument. Yes. It's an understanding. It's a presupposition, right? Whether or not I want to believe that thing exists, it colors every single aspect of life in this particular country. Right. I would make the argument it colors life in, around the world. From beauty standards okay. to, to, to economic uh, 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 transact, like I was talking about the Congo earlier. It co- so I don't think white people are better than me. I don't believe that. Right. But they have created, a, they've established a paradigm that mm. positions them as better because that is the only way they can exploit people who look like me. Yes. All right. Now we're on to something. I would say, I would say they created the matrix. Facts. Facts. Right? Facts. So you're absolutely, they created, they created the software that we are operating in. This is the operating system. The operating system is life. This is us, right? Okay. What software are we using? to operate this system that we live in. And in, your, in, in the point that you made, yes. Why was that? What did, what did the people, what did the, um, what did those who colonized this world, what did, they, what did they understand? They understood that they weren't the only ones. They understood that they were less educated than they thought they were. There was almost like a sense of jealousy, right? And so again, they, they went around the world causing a lot of problems, right? One would say, one would argue. And I think what's interesting is the powers that be are operating so many steps ahead, right? That we can't even fathom. And they have us in this giant trick bag. And again, it's, it's why, why is it though? Because they, they, they control media. They control media. Media is a medium in which you can push information through, right? It's television. You tell a vision. And that vision that I'm telling you is now influencing you to think and feel a certain way. We call this, now we call this propaganda, right? I can make you choose decisions without you realizing that I actually influenced the decision that you actually made. I made you believe that these people are who they are because of the images that the problem with what's going on is that it's very, it's all psychological, right? You have the best and the brightest psychologists that they have on, on payroll who sit down and they try to figure out how they can break the minds of people, right? We saw this with the Willie Lynch letters. I mean, it's something very simple. We saw this with, with the Holocaust. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you get people to do evil things and make it and make them and give themselves a moral pass, just like you said, right? I try to make a moral excuse for my behaviors. How do we do it? It's all psychological. They, they again, in martial arts, I used to teach martial arts. And one of the things I always used to teach the students is that if you can control the head, you control the body. That's not just physical, but that's also mental, using your words, being able to manipulate a person's emotions. All these things are real. And again, what happens? You're dealing with these people who are, who are wizards of words, right? <laughs> they cast words over you, right? right? This is why they say you, they, they, <laughs> that's why they say you spell words, right? Spell words, you cast them. These people are wizards. It's all spiritual, right? If you wouldn't want to dive into it, these people know these words have meaning, they have power. That's why I don't say white supremacy, right? So again, these people are crafty. 
they know and understand things. A lot of them have occult knowledge, right? If you really dive into a lot of these things, these things are real. And so again, what is it? We're being hit on all fronts, mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, right? And so when you gain so much leverage over time, because they're playing the long game, if we get people to think that the issues are surface level, then they're distracted. I agree. I agree. So let let me ask you this, because I think it transitions smoothly into a current thing that's happening. Um, What is it called? Critical race theory. (laughs) (laughs) Because for me, even though I I have conversations, I'm not a believer in conversation for the sake of conversation. I think it has to have a purpose. I think it has to have intention. So um, part of the conversation around critical race theory is that you are essentially teaching white kids that they're better mm-hmm. and teaching black kids that they are inherently, you know, handicapped. Right. And I staunchly disagree with that. Mm-hmm. And the reason I disagree with that is, and I, and I, I think, I suspect you'll, you'll agree with me. Regardless of what white, oh, I'm sorry. Regardless of what young black kids call it, mm-hmm. whether it's white supremacy or whether it's economics, they must, for their safety, understand that you, and, and, and it should color how they move through the world, especially for black boys, you are more valuable to this country dead than alive. Mm. So whether he calls, whether that little 14 year old boy calls it white supremacy or whatever the case may be, he must understand whether it's to the elite or to the poor white people. You are more valuable to this country dead than alive. And why is it? Obviously, the elites are going to exploit you. Um, you know, for example, if you go to prison and you're, we're working in one of these private prisons, they might have to pay the Mexican six dollars an hour. They only have to pay you six cents. Right? right. So there's an incentive for them to send you to prison or to harvest your organs, whatever the case may be. For the poor whites, a lot of their perception is colored by their heritage mm. because the elites play their grandparents against you know, mm-hmm. you and your grandparents, right? right? So now for them, they are either carrying out the legacy of the KKK or they are going to deny you a loan at the bank or they're going to deny you an employment opportunity. There are real consequences for this. So I agree that just looking at it on the surface, having the service conversation is a waste of time. But I need to equip these black kids to understand the context that they're walking into. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times where some people have a similar disposition in that conversation of we focus on white supremacy too much, they're not tracing it all the way back to why. So for me, I think we need to talk more thoroughly about it. And I think we need and I think this is where, you know, we're talking about the nation of Islam and things. I think this is where they get it right. They make sure. Mm -hmm. that their following understands the context that they live in. True.